I loved him, and that love changed me. Said Jesus about God, and said Thomas about Jesus. His breath was in my ear, and his smell made him even more real to me. Jesus was born a mamzer, something like a bastard, estranged from his father and an outcast in his village. So when he arrived at the temple at the heart of the great city, he found the love he had been longing for in a heavenly father. But when the temple told him, you must pay such and such and do this and that to be in touch with him, Jesus took off for the river. In the river we will go under the water. In the river we will go down to the root. In the river we will remake ourselves. So Jesus left his mother and Thomas followed. They traveled straight to the deep, to the doorway in the field of wheat, to the hidden passage beyond the pale. Leaving home was a matter of survival, but living like they did hastened their death. Home threatened their souls. Leaving demanded their flesh. They had found something fundamental. Jesus in God and Thomas in Jesus. Jesus watched the way that God seemed to be everywhere, no matter how far from home he ran. <clears throat> Thomas watched the way that Jesus tasted his bread and could tell stories deep into the yawning hours of dawn. <clears throat> Here in the spring desert, they could go and come along the river bank, always within reach of one another. And here, they began to eat. Mama, solo per te la mia canzone vola. Mama, sarai con me, non tu sarai più sola. Quanto ti voglio bene, queste Seuss, 
Think. Think and wander. Wander and think. How much water can a little boy drink? I was eight or nine, and I was waiting for my turn, and I was scared. I saw others, and they were flailing, and I thought maybe they were scared too. Or maybe they caught it, the Holy Ghost. When it was my turn, I was just fighting to get out of that water. They even dumped me once. <gasps> Twice. <gasps> Three times. <gasps> when it was over, I felt nothing. Think. Think and wander. Wander and think. How much water can a little boy drink? was as real as my fright and fantastical at the same time. And all of a sudden, the nod of the head, the wave of the hand, bodies were flung from the pews, stumping, arms pulsing, hands reaching, as though to touch the hem of the garment or the face of Jesus. The footwork, it was lit. It was fire. The stomp, the chug, the dip, the hopscotch, the high knees, the turn and jump, and the huckabuck <laughs> were all fantastic representations of unbridled joy and frightening. Was this praise? Who would want to catch such a thing? How do you prepare for it? Does it just sneak up behind you and tag, you're it? That ghost was possessing people and it scared me. And sometimes someone would fall and collapse to the floor and an usher would run over with a small bottle and place it under the nose and <laughs> a miracle. <laughs> they would slowly come to life, or back to life. How much water can a little boy drink? Think and wander. And when I Let me rise. 
let me run like a bird, like a bird. tables around food. Tonight there was a feast along the riverbank. Fish fillet and olives, roots and ripe eggplants, wine and wine, and the deep rumble of the kinds of songs that took us under the water. They carry us to faraway places that touch somehow the need to sing. We moved in a way that could be dancing, with no boundary between the food, our bodies, and our words. Thomas sat next to Jesus and laughed. He leaned against him for a moment to make room for a few others on the bench. Thomas got lost, tracing the patches in Jesus' beard, the corners of his face that had grown soft from these weeks of sacred feasting. <coughs> when I am here, God is with us, Jesus proclaimed to no one and everyone. The room surged with cheers and bubbles of laughter, but Thomas knew what he meant. Thomas had followed this man because of this thought. Thomas knew that God had to live somewhere, so why not here, on this bench between us tonight? A reading from the book of milk and honey. To be salt is to be powerful. He's a real man of God, my mother told me. Listen, Tommy, to the compassion in his voice. I wanted that compassion in my voice, so what do I do? Sitting, squeezed between the soft shoulder of my mother and the stiff, starched collar of my father, I'd stare at the sculpted body of Christ hanging there on the cross, slender, nude, looking like a sad sigh. I was fascinated by his ribs, by the pull of the skin on his bones, his smooth, hairless thighs. I had no words to understand this body or what I felt when I looked at it, but like a baby, I would have put him in my mouth if I could. I wanted him against my gums. I wanted to learn him by touch and to soothe the strange burn of growing. Do I whisper? Do I shout? What is your body doing there? Bodies are bizarre, and every body is hidden from me. My parents under stockings and blazers, the priest under robes, my sisters under thick skirts and boxy blouses, and here is Christ, there, exposed, full of holes. 
to be soft is to be 